Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father of mercies, and God of all consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may attend to your word, confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. Humble yourselves before God, confess your sins to him, and implore his forgiveness. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your punishment now and forever. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Forgive me all my sins and grant me the power of your Holy Spirit that I may amend my sinful life. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stand and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. O Lord, in the wondrous sacrament of Holy Communion, you have left us a remembrance of your passion. Grant that we may so receive the sacred mystery of your body and blood, that the fruits of your redemption may continually be, man be man manifest in us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading is from Exodus chapter 24. Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the rules. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the people of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen to the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he threw against the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people. And they said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do, and we will be obedient. And Moses took the blood and threw it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Then Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu and 70 of the elders of Israel went up, and they saw the God of Israel. There was under his feet, as it were, a pavement of sapphire stone like the very heaven for clearness. And he did not lay his hand on the chief men of the people of Israel. They beheld God and ate and drank. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from Hebrews chapter 9. But when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy places, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of defiled persons with ashes of a heifer sanctify for the purification of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Therefore he is the mediator of a new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance, since a death has occurred that redeems them from the transgressions committed under the first covenant. For where a will is involved, the death of the one who made it must be established. 
For a will takes effect only at death, since it is not in force as long as the one who made it is alive. Therefore, not even the first covenant was inaugurated without blood. For when every, co- for when every commandment of the law had been declared by Moses to all the people, he took the blood of the calves and goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant that God commanded for you. And in the same way, he sprinkled with the blood both the tent and all the vessels used in worship. Indeed, under the law, almost everything is purified with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Holy Gospel. Holy Gospel is from Mark chapter 14. And on the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. And wherever he went, enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready, There, prepare for us. And the disciples set out and went to the city and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. And when it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they were reclining at table and eating, Jesus said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be sorrowful and say to him one after another, Is it I? He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the dish with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. And as they were eating, he took bread, and after blessing it, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being a one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and descended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we will continue with the uh, washing of the feet of the children in our congregation as I read the passage Uh, From the Gospel of John, I encourage uh, parents, if you are sending your children forward, to go ahead and take their socks and and shoes off. I don't do that. So take their socks and shoes off while we're reading this passage. Then after I'm done reading, we'll invite the children forward. Reading from John chapter 13. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart of this world, to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. 
Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper, he laid aside his outer garments, and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. But Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, The one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean, and you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. That's why he said, Not all of you are clean. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should also do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. We invite the children forward.
grace and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't know about you, but I know a lot of people who are uh, squeamish uh, when they uh, see blood. Uh, seeing blood doesn't really bother me too much, although I'm not real fond of those big needles they stick in your arm in order to get the blood. But uh, I'm not really that squeamish around blood, but most of us might remember when we were younger as kids, if we were out playing and we maybe scraped our knees or our shins or maybe our elbows or maybe accidentally cut our finger, at first it didn't really hurt until you saw the blood. And then you thought, I'm going to die. Uh, just the sight of blood can cause that reaction. Uh, even as adults, uh, most of us are kind of be okay with blood, but we just prefer it stay in our bodies. That's where it belongs. Because, of course, we know that um, regardless of how we feel about blood, uh, blood, one thing is for certain, blood is important. <laughs> blood, we can't literally, we can't live without it. We have to have blood in our bodies. The average uh, person has uh, five quarts of blood in their body at a given time. And if we lose more than two quarts at the same time, then we would die. Uh, blood is so important. Blood does a lot of different things for us in our, in our bodies. Of course, it, it's uh, important to carry oxygen around. Oxygen is what gives us life. Uh, blood carries oxygen uh, to the different cells, different organs in the, in the body, uh, keeps us alive. Uh, blood keeps us warm. But also an important thing that blood does is it gets rid of the waste. Uh, blood gets rid of those, uh, the waste in our bodies, like carbon dioxide or some of the, the acids in our body. Blood, uh, blood carries that waste to the organs so that will be expelled from our body. Those, those uh, wastes, uh, the, the harmful things, if they stay in our body, uh, they contaminate the body and they can actually lead to our own demise. They become toxic, poisonous that waste in our body. So blood has that important role of getting uh, rid of that, uh, that waste that could kill us. These last uh, several weeks, uh, we've been uh, looking at the theme, we preach Christ crucified, how he died on the cross. By his wounds, we have been healed. By his blood, we have been healed. Because you and I have a sickness in our bodies, if you will, sickness in our hearts and our minds and our souls, and that sickness, of course, is, death, or is sin, and sin contaminates us, and left unchecked, sin, like, like a poisonous toxin, can ruin everything, can ruin our relationship with God, ruin our relationship with one another, uh, sin left within us can have devastating consequences, in fact, we know that the payment, the wages of sin, is death. We need somebody to save us. We need uh, someone to pay that wage for us, which means we need somebody to shed blood. In the Old Testament, uh, this was a way in which God went about providing forgiveness uh, to his people often uh, through the work of the high priest. The high priest was designated as the mediator between God and people. And the high priest would often serve that function. The priests themselves would offer sacrifices. The blood of animals was shed for the sake of the people. And once a year, the high priest would go into the tabernacle, into the temple area. He'd go into the holy place and through the holy place into the holy, holy place. Only once a year was a high priest allowed in the most holy place, which is where the Ark of the Covenant was. And that, that day of that year was called Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. The high priest would take the blood of an animal and sacrifice that blood in order to cleanse him from his own sins, and then he would sacrifice the animal there in the Holy of Holies and take the blood of that animal and smear it over the ark, over the altar, as a sacrifice for the sins of the people. And this was repeated every year, this Day of Atonement. And through the shedding of the blood of those animals, the people's sins were forgiven. But it wasn't because of the high priest who was a sinner. 
And it wasn't because of the animals themselves. It was because the blood that was shed would point ahead to one final sacrifice, one final day of atonement, when blood would be shed for the sins of the world. And that, of course, is through the blood of Jesus. God designated his son, the Father designated his son. Jesus came into this world to be our high priest, to be the one that would mediate between a holy and just and righteous God and us who are sinful, deserving of death and condemnation. Jesus would come to be that mediator, to be that high priest, that go-between. He would come so that he could offer a sacrifice for our sins. He would come so that he could save us from our own demise and destruction. He was our high priest. And yet, there's a difference between the high priest of the Old Testament and the role of high priest that Jesus serves. You see, in the Old Testament, uh, the high priest uh, would offer sacrifice animals for the people's sins. Jesus, our high priest, would offer himself as a sacrifice for our sins. In the Old Testament, the high priest would take uh, the animals and bind their hands or bind their feet and their, and, their, and their limbs and place them on the altar and slaughter them. Jesus, our high priest, was bound to the cross and slaughtered in death on the cross, shedding his blood for us. In the Old Testament, the high priest would, would do these things so that the people could avoid the judgment of God. But Jesus, our high priest, got the judgment of God, got the punishment and the condemnation that our sins deserve. Jesus, our high priest. And here's the paradox. Jesus is our high priest, but he's also the lamb. The lamb of sacrifice. The lamb of who gave up his life for our sins. Our Lord Jesus bore our sins in his body on the cross. He was pierced for our transgressions and crushed for our iniquities, and by his wounds, by the shedding of his blood, we have been healed, we have been cleansed. It's hard to think about all the wounds that Jesus had while he was on the cross, the wounds to his head because of the thorns, maybe the bruises, the scrapes, uh, the, the cuts that he had sustained in his body. Of course, his back uh, having been whipped by the Roman soldiers, uh, blood pouring from his hands and his feet nailed to the cross. We could think of those wounds and we could see just how much blood Jesus must have lost hanging there for us and for our sins. And, and we might be a little squeamish we might want to turn away when we think about all that loss of blood. But we dare not. We need to look at Jesus and to see that blood because it's only through the blood of Jesus that our sins, which would contaminate us, sins that would be toxic, sins that would kill us, it's only through the blood of Jesus, Jesus who in a sense has given us a transfusion. Though he was perfect in every way, he was contaminated with our sinful blood. And because of the sacrifice that he gave on the cross, now we have been forgiven, we have been healed, we have been made clean again. We might not want to think about all the loss of blood of Jesus, but it's only through that blood that he shed for us out of love for us, that we have been healed. Shortly before he went to the cross, uh, the night before he went, he uh, gathered with his disciples uh, in the upper room. And as they were in the upper room, uh, they celebrated the Passover meal. Passover, as you remember, was a time in the Old Testament where God had promised to set his people free from slavery in Egypt, and he would do this as he announced this curse that the angel of death would come into Egypt and strike down the firstborn of every family. Unless, and he instruct, instructed the Israelites, Moses instructed the Israelites to take a year old, spotless, unblemished lamb and to slaughter that lamb and to take the blood from that lamb and smear it over the wooden door frame outside their homes. And when the angel of death came into Egypt, the angel would pass over those homes. The angel would 
pass over, death would pass over those homes. They were saved because of the blood of the Lamb. And every year they celebrated this great festival, this great feast, this great salvation event. Every year they celebrated the Passover meal. So now as Jesus gathers with his disciples uh, in the upper room, celebrating this meal with them, he takes, he takes the bread and he hands it to his disciples and he says to them, take, eat, this is my body. And then he takes the cup of wine, hands it to his disciples, says, take, drink, this is my blood. Jesus, he's the Passover lamb. His body would be broken on the cross, wounded and pierced for our sins. His blood would be shed. His blood would be spilled. He's the Passover lamb. Because of his blood smeared over the wooden cross, sin and death and judgment has passed over us. He got everything that we deserved. He's our Passover lamb. And as he gathers with his disciples that night and he celebrates this Passover, he gives them this new meal, a meal that would remind them of his broken body, his shed blood in the bread and in the wine. He would give them of him, himself to them, just as he does tonight for us. And every time we gather here in this upper room, Jesus, the one who died for us, of course, the one who risen, he rose for us, Jesus who shed his blood on the cross, this Jesus is right here with us, and he gives us, in this bread, in this wine, he gives us his body, the assurance that his body was broken for our sins. He gives us his blood, the promise that we have been cleansed. We have been made whole again. We have been healed. And this holy supper is Christ, our high priest. In this holy supper is Christ, our Passover lamb, the lamb of God, whose blood was shed for us. We preach Christ crucified, and by his wounds, by his blood, we have been healed. Amen. May the peace of God which transcends all our human understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting.
we sing our offering hymn. Please stand for prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, in the upper room, you washed the apostles' feet, thus teaching us to love one another as you have loved us. By your Spirit, work in us true service and humility towards one another. In the upper room, you gather with your apostles to eat your last meal with them before your suffering, your death, and your resurrection. We thank you for gathering with us sinners now being with us throughout our lives, and bringing us into your resurrection through faith in you. In the upper room, you showed yourself to be our great high priest and also the very Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. As we remember your sacrifice and the blood you shed for us, fill our hearts with repentance and faith that we might rejoice in the forgiveness of sin, eternal life, and salvation that you grant to us. Lamb of God, grant us your peace. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. On the tree of the cross you gave salvation to mankind, that whence death arose, thence life also might rise again, and that he who by a tree once overcame, likewise by a tree might be overcome, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, the angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud to magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on us, children of men, and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that he may establish in us a living faith, and prepare us joyfully to remember our Redeemer and receive him who comes to us in his body and blood. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come and the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, our Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace.